More likely than not, you used a location-based mapping app before. So I thought it'd be fun for us to build something which incorporates these elements. Here's what we're gonna build today. Up top, you can see the estimated time to travel, estimated distance, as well as a polyline, which marks the route that the user should take as suggested by Google Maps. At the bottom, you can see a photo, which helps the user know what it is at the marker on the map. In this case, Independence Palace. Another thing we're gonna build is the behavior for when the user clicks on a marker on the map, the photo, estimated time, estimated distance, and address changes. Let's get the party started. As you can see, we're starting off with an expo for React Native project. The first thing we need to do is get the map showing. Cool, looks like everything's working. Now let's add some default zooming. If we save and refresh now, we're gonna get an error. That's because we don't have latitude yet. So at this point, we also need to go ahead and get permission from the user to use their location. We'll give it a default state. And when the component mounts, we're gonna ask for permission to use the user's location. If the user hasn't granted us permission, we're gonna prompt the user to give us, give us it. Let's go ahead and comment out latitude and longitude so we don't get this error. Okay, so if you don't get a prompt asking for permission to use location, you may need to reinstall the Expo client, restart your packager, as well as your simulator. Let's go ahead and allow. All right, now that that's done, let's go ahead and use the globally defined navigator. This function, get current position, takes two arguments. Both of them callbacks, one for success, one for error. Okay, let's debug. And everything looks okay. Let's just pass the callback to set state so that we can console log. Okay, so we can see here that we have latitude and longitude. Now, let's go ahead and pass this. Let's also guard to make sure that we have a latitude and longitude available.
Okay, everything looks good. The map loads and we zoom into our current location. Let's go ahead and indicate to the user where they're currently located. Okay, that looks good. Okay, at this point, I think it's a good idea to add markers to our map. I've already added a file, locations.json, locally, which has some data about markers that I want. You can see that it's just an array with a bunch of objects, and these objects have keys to them. Name, coordinates, image URL. We're gonna use this. Now when our component loads, we have locations. Let's grab one of these locations and set it to state. Okay, we can see that we have locations here and it's just an array of objects. Now, we need to add a package for drawing the polyline. We'll jump back to our terminal, run yarn add mapbox slash polyfill, save. This may take a few minutes. Okay, let's go ahead and import polyline so that we can use it to draw the line on our map. Next, we'll write a new function, which will use the polyline. I'm just gonna throw a bunch of code on the screen and then afterwards explain. Okay, so, so this function is going to take our state's latitude, longitude, destination latitude, destination longitude. We're gonna guard to make sure that these values are not null. And if they are not null, then we're going to call, and if they're not null, we're gonna parse them into a string to be used by another function, get directions. Okay, let me explain what this function is going to do. Get directions is going to take a starting location and a destination location. Make a request to Google's API and get the response. As you can see, this is a URL that we call. We pass it a starting location coordinates, a destination location coordinates, as well as our API key. I'm hard coding it for simplicity's sake. After we get the response, we parse it. Next, we use Polyline to decode what we get back from Google. Afterwards, we map over the points of the decoded Polyline, and then we set state to chords. Oops, I forgot that this is an asynchronous function. Okay, it doesn't seem like everything is broken. All right. We're almost ready to draw our polyline. Now, we just need to pass merge chords as a callback to set state. We'll do that up here as well. Next, we'll go ahead and grab the coordinates off of state and use them to draw the polyfill. the polyline, excuse me. So let's save it, jump back to our simulator. Okay, we have another error. Right here I spelled this incorrectly. 
Let's save it. Okay, excellent. We have a polyline drawn on the map. Okay, right now, I think it would be a good time to take a break. We've been at this for a while. We've done a lot. We've taken a brand new React Native project, added a map to it, asked the user for permission to use their location, zoomed in on their location, as well as set state with latitude and longitude of said location. We've also grabbed a set of locations locally and routed to one of those locations. You can imagine that these locations could have come from your backend, a public API, or a message service. But for this example, we just decided to go with a locally sold file. In the next video, we'll finish the task that we haven't done yet. The header, which indicates distance and time, as well as the ending address. The markers on the map, which a user can click and update all data on the application, as well as an image, which will give the user some feedback onto what is at this marker. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for part two.